Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on cardiologic, cardiac lecture number 32. Heart failure, left sided, to pave the way. To pave, for my sticky notes. Um, cardiac complications of CHF. A little exhaustive, but like I said, I'm taking one piece at a time and breaking this down. Uh, and this focus is going to be on left-sided heart failure. All right, let's get into it. So previously we talked about the structure of the heart and we said that there's a right-sided and left-sided heart. And the right side is chronic and the left side is acute. And see those lectures to just understand that principle. But left side is what we're talking about and the left side is uh, more acute because it pumps out cardiac output oxygenated. And if it's not pumping oxygenated blood, um, that's problematic because decreased perfusion. And if you have decreased perfusion, you have decreased level of consciousness and restlessness. That means that the person is, and you start to see decrease, all the organs that are not getting O2. So that's acute. That's why left side is most acute. Also the problem is, is that it builds up into the lungs. And that fluid starts to build up into the lungs and then you start to hear crackles. So um, patients who are uh, left-sided heart failure um, are more acute than right-sided heart failure. That's the most likely. They're both acute, but look at the patient first. So some principles to understand with it is, is that it's more of the acute side, you know, because it has the oxygenated blood but it's very specific about um, what the patient might sound like. You know, when a patient has CHF, um, their heart, you know, and their valves um, are reactionary to the fluid. And with left-sided heart failure, the main issue is the building up in the lungs. And when you start to hear that, you start to hear extra heart sounds. More specifically, specifically in previous lecture we talked about s1 and s2 now s1 is these two valves the uh, tricuspid and uh, mitral so try pulling my aorta those are the order of valves s1 of these two valves and s2 of these two valves all right now they're the closing of those valves and that's a, that's your love uh, I think sounds that you hear. Now, when you have an excess of fluid in this area, it's building up in the lungs. What happens is, is that these valves, they don't close simultaneously, love dub. What you start to get is um, you get a split. And you might hear what's called like an S3 sound. And an S3 sound is like ba bum bum ba bum bum ba bum bum you know? And, and that is uh, Kentucky. They call it Kentucky, 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 Kentucky. And once you hear that sound, that's why when you're doing the apical pulse on the fifth mid midclavicular line, see my lecture on heart sounds, um, and you hear Kentucky, 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 ba bum bum ba bum bum ba bum bum um, Flip that patient to the left. Flip him to the left. Flip your bell of your stethoscope. This side. And listen at this section. And you're going to try to isolate this sound. The other one, S4 sound, is also too much fluid. Tennessee, 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 Tennessee. And that's the sound it makes. It doesn't say Tennessee, but that's kind of the, the, is the way it's called a gallop. Now, S3, S4, um, generally in the NCLEX though, they'll say they have an S3 sound or an S4 sound. They don't get into actual listening to the sounds and differentiating it. Um, so some specific things about left-sided heart failure that they have is this S3, and S4 sound. They're dyspneic because they can't quite breathe. They have crackles that don't clear. Their lungs are crackly. And then they um, 
a lot of times when they're sleeping, they get orthopnea, which is difficulty breathing when they're sleeping. And generally, CHF patients don't lay down. They're always going to want to be upright. And that's a big indicator. So that's one of the big things that we do is we put them upright. Um, and also we give them oxygen, right? So we give them oxygen, we put them upright. We do vitals, you know, we might put them on EKG. We get an EKG or ECG. We'll monitor and lead too, looking for perfusion problems. Um, we'll anticipate probably the ASICs medications and um, what else and things that will affect preload and afterload so preload is before the heart okay so think of uh, right side in, okay it's a venous it's stuff going into the heart right afterload is what's going outside so like more arterial Okay, so preload is before the heart and afterload is after. What the pressure you have to do to get out of the heart. All right, so there's medications that affect preload. Lasix affects preload. Morphine affects preload. Lasix also affects afterload. But, um, and then we work on things that um, affect afterload as well. And... Um, those are like uh, lisinopril, uh, calcium channel blockers, like lefitopine, or ARBs, like lasartan. And these type of medications all affect the fluid and the pre afterload out here. And we want to make them urinate. Okay, we want it to to increase the urine output. Because otherwise this fluid's gonna build up on a left sided heart failure into their lungs. So some other treatments that we would do for interventions are we sit them upright, um, we give them oxygen. We'll also might do some high flow oxygen, like um, a BiPAP or something like that. Where um, we what happens is, is that in the vascular space in the uh, alveoli, um, what happens is, is all this fluid is over and what we want to do is increase the amount of um, pressure to keep that fluid where it needs to be instead of uh, seeping out in crackles out here. Um, what else? In acute situations, we might use nitrates and um, nitro in acute situations. All right, so let's do a sleeps and let's go through it. All right, so he sleeps. All right, so is it acute? It's more acute. How does it start? Well, left side heart failure is because of a specific structural problem. Labs, BNP again, so you may BNP lecture, which is lecture 32. Eating, doesn't really affect eating, how they'll be on a low-salt diet. Uh, assessment, it's more crackles, lungs, uh, orthopnea, um, shortness of breath, dyspnea, S3 sound, S4 sound specifically. Uh, prescriptions, Lasix, Bumex, uh, maybe some aldactone, uh, things that affect the uh, afterload, um, like uh, nifedipine, um, ACE inhibitors, lisinopril. Uh, procedures, what kind of procedures? Nothing really, uh, mainly um, if they need a balloon pump, you know, so because they need, they need patients with a CHF, you know, will need heart, uh, or heart transplant if it's less than uh, uh, 30 ejection fraction and then what stands out what stands out about left side heart failure is it's acute it's acute because it's left side it could back up into the lungs and it causes an acute problem it's definitely uh, something that you put the patient upright anticipate orders to deal with the fluid and um, to uh, to notify the doctor if the patient looks acute um, that's about it for me. My name is Camp and this is Nursing Camp. I can be found on social media on the social media channels below and also on nursingcamp.com. Like, comment, or follow me there. Nurse on. Bye.